Here you go, la. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Bright Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School Ministry. We're glad that you could be here. The weather is changing. We've got a lot of things going on. We want to call your attention this morning to the book of Acts. We're going to begin at chapter number uh, 10. We're going to verse 34 through 47. 34 through 47. And we go deal with three specific viewpoints or topics. We're going to deal with uh, barriers of being an effective Christian or being an effective church. We're going to deal with the importance of Peter's ministry, okay, and we're going to deal with how we can go forward. So these are going to be our underlying tones our underlying subtopics that we're going to deal with, but we're going straight down the scripture. Acts chapter number 10, verse 34 through 47. And this is our spiritual prescription for believers on today. We thank God for allowing you to come in, worship with us and allowing us to be a part of your ministry, allowing us to come into your homes. We thank you for joining us on Facebook, on the teleconference, for streaming our videos on YouTube, going back and looking at things. We want you to get into the Word and make it a part of your life. If you're ever in the capital city of Montgomery, Alabama, the Bryant Missionary Baptist Church is located at the 3645 Mormon Bridge Road where the pastor Ronald Moncree serves as shepherd of the flock. And we would love to have you come out and worship with us. Join us on the second Sunday in January uh, for our church anniversary. And we are definitely excited about that, been in existence, been in ministry for over 100 plus years. So that's a blessing. As always, we keep lifted up our sick, shut in, and bereaved family. Now, what does that mean? That means that calls attention. It causes an alert to people that need God to step in to their situation. So we don't wait till a specific time of service. We go into prayer right at the moment that the request is made. Okay? We go into prayer when God lays it on our mind, on our heart to pray about someone. We don't have to wait till Sunday morning. We don't have to wait till we see the pastor, the deacon, or, or the ministers. We go, we get to work right then. Praying, decreeing, believing God. Now, so remember I said I shut in our bereaved family. 
We also want you to know that if you want to make contributions to the church, you can use our Give a Fly app. We want you to watch our Facebook page. We'll be putting the button up uh, shortly so that you can press the button and simply go to that app, or you can use the cash tag app. Okay? Uh, so these are more than tools that we can use to make sure um, that if you want to contribute to this ministry, that it can be effective. We also want you to know that coming up in the next week or two, we'll be utilizing Zoom for our interactive Bible study. If you do not have Zoom, Z-O-O-M, Download it on your tablet, on your phone, your laptop, or your computer. Please, ma'am, please, sir, go in, download that application so that you will be able to follow along with us as we do this interactive step. So may God bless you, may God keep you, and may heaven continue to smile upon you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for the opportunity to study that word. We thank you, Father God for allowing us to come into your house of Christ. God, we confess that we are sinners saved by grace. We acknowledge the finished works of your Son, Jesus Christ, and we accept him as our personal Lord and Savior. God, we decrease now that you might increase. Speak to us, through us, and for us. Let the words of our mouth and meditation of our heart be holy and acceptable in our sight. Overshadow us with your Holy Spirit Overpower us with your anointing. Continue to move forward in our lives. God, we pray that this service would be what you would have it to be. We ask that your Holy Spirit have free reign, free recourse over this and all aspects of the service. Give your angels charge over the service inside and out. Post them on the doors. Bind up the attack of the enemy. God, we counsel the assignment. We counsel the thought. We counsel the plan, the is and the scheme of the enemy that will want to disrupt this service or cause fear to come into your people. We cover this place with a bloody thorny hedge of protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the redeemed of God say, Amen. 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 Here we are again in the book of Acts. New Testament scripture, verse number 34. Chapter number 10, verse number 34. And what we are dealing with is Peter revealing the good news to the Gentiles. Now, when you study the Bible, there were two types of people moving from the Old Testament to the New Testament, the Jews and the Gentiles. The Jewish people are those that growed up under the Mosaic law. They practiced the Jewish faith according to the law given Moses, how he had instructed them. Gentiles are the new converts. They may have not have been born Jewish, okay, but, 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 but God adopted them into the family when Jesus came on the scene, okay? So he fulfilled the law made it easier to serve. You don't have to, to, to go through all of the uh, rituals and customs that they did in the Old Testament. All you have to do is accept Jesus Christ as being your personal Lord and, and Savior, and then you move forward from that point. So we're dealing with the Jews and Gentiles. Peter is speaking in Acts to some converts. He's speaking to a church. Now, I want you to get this mindset. In modern, in modern era, in other words, in today's time, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that he would be speaking to some people that just came into the knowledge of God. Look at it that way, okay? They've accepted Christ as their Savior. They are, they are coming into the church in order to grow and function in a manner that God will have them to function. Okay, so that's basically what he's doing. Now, we begin at verse number 34. Now, there's some, there's some powerful stuff in here, so follow along with it. He said, opening his mouth, 
Peter said, most certainly I understand now that God is not one to show partiality to people as do Gentiles were evicted from God's anointing. Okay? So in other words, Peter is saying, God, not a respected person. He go treat you just like you treat me. You can't curry favor with God based on the side of town that you're from, based on your family name. You can't curry favor with God based on, 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 on what you do or not do. Everybody the same and God's our same. Okay? Treat everybody the same so that there's no issue, no problem. Now, the reason why Peter is doing this is very important as we go forward. Peter was a disciple, which means he followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. He was one that, that Jesus caught fishing, caught him in the midst of doing his moral, mortal duty. And he said, look here, if you follow me, I'm going to make you fish of men. I'm going to show you how to attract. I'm going to show you how to minister. I'm going to show you how to get people to win souls for Christ. That's what we are. We are fishers of men. Women, boys, girls, and children. In other words, anybody that cross our path, okay, then when the opportunity to present itself to witness and share the good news, which what Peter did, that's what we do. That means that we got to study to show ourselves approved. Now, I want to tell you this. Uh, understand that just because you share it don't mean they go receive it right then. Your job is just to release the word to them. A lot of things were said to me when I was younger. I didn't. I didn't get them, but I got later down the road. Now, Peter got promoted along with the other disciples. Now, Peter was kind of unusual. He had some issues. He dealt with the flesh. He, he, he was a hothead. He was a, had a temper. He was with Jesus when he got arrested in the garden, and they said it was Peter that drew his sword and cut off the centurion ear. Okay? So Peter went back and forth between operating under the influence of the Holy Spirit and dealing with spiritual mission. That's how we do. We got some things that God's still working on us on, but we still belong to him. And God said, I said, all right, I'm working on you. I understand you're struggling in this area. We go get it right. Mm -hmm. All right. One of the unique things about Peter, Peter had divine insight. Not because he walked with Jesus and talked with him and sat under the teachings of him. That, I mean, that's great. You can't get no better than that. But Jesus himself posed a question to Peter. And he asked him, he said, well, who do men say that I am? Then he finally got down to him. He said, well, who do you say I am? And when Peter revealed that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God, you know, Peter, Jesus said to Peter, you blessed. Because flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you. But my father, which is in heaven, that tells us that Peter was divinely inspired. Now, when we check the scripture, what we find out is that all scripture, is given by divine inspiration. What I'm trying to tell you is that the same God that talked to Peter will talk to you. The same God that inspired Peter will inspire you. You know, And if you ask people, no matter what walk of life they come from or what they're doing, you know, how did you come up with this? Michael Jackson just didn't come up with Billie Jean on his own. He was inspired to come up with Billie Jean. Mahalia Jackson, that's the same uh, um, uh, precious Lord on her own. She was inspired to do it. James Cleveland didn't preach the way he preached because he just thought about it and, and, and he came up with it. God inspired him to do it. Something that's simple as working on your car. God inspires you to do it. He tells you what to do. And most of the times if we listen to that small sweet voice and do what thus said the Lord, things will work out better for you. 
Sometimes we want to say stuff to people. Sometimes we want to go off on folk. But the inspiration of God check our spirit and say, no, nah, you can't say nothing. You know, I got it, I have it. You know, and, and it frustrates the cardinal matter because, you know, you you wondering in your mind, they don't know who they dealing with. <laughs> you know, I, I want to give them a piece of my mind. You know, but God want to give them a piece of his spirit. So we got to understand that he's working on the situation. Now, another reason why Peter was speaking is his name got changed. When he revealed who Jesus was, Jesus called him blessed and called him Simon by his own. And he said, now Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the king. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that makes for a great discussion. We can't, we can't go into it now, but one of the keys to the kingdom is Christ. And, and, and this makes for a great discussion. Hopefully one day we can talk about these keys. But just when you think you got them all, God show you another key. <laughs> you know, so there's more than one. Keep that in mind. The next thing that happened to Peter the, that leads up to him making this statement is that he got promoted. He got promoted to an apostle. Apostles are responsible for the growth, building, and development of the church. So it makes sense that Jesus would give him the keys, tell him he would be a fisher of men, promote him to apostle. Uh, it makes sense that Peter would not only have the understanding, but he would operate spiritually. Okay? Now, this is what you're saying. Well, that was then, this is now the first line on the church covenant says, having been led as we believe by the Spirit. Now, what do you need to take away from that? Three things. First of all, it's a continuous process. Having means that it's ongoing. Okay? Second part, you got to be led by the Spirit. No way around that. Third part, which is foremost, you got to be a believer. Now, when you get into a situation where you're talking about moves of the Spirit and how God can move and what God can do, and, and we can do all things through Christ that strengthens us, and people tell you, uh, it don't take all that, uh, uh, I don't believe that, they're really saying they're not believers. That's what they're really saying. Mm -hmm. Now, if you want the church to be limited, Get in the midst of a people that are unbelievers. And it's just like a train slowing down. That's exactly what happened to the church. Everybody in here has to be believers. Okay? You know, if you're talking to somebody about something that's within these 66 books, and, 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 and they telling you, I, I believe this, but I won't believe that. No, you got to believe it all. You may not have gotten to the point where you experience it yet, but from Genesis to Revelation, if it's written in there, you got to believe, even though you may not understand. i give you a prime example. When I went to school, after I got out of the military, they were trying to teach me algebra with trigonometry. I was okay, bro, with the algebra. But trigonometry is a whole different other beast. And I got in there and I wrestled with it and it wrestled with me. And I was trying to talk myself out of doing it. But in order to finish the course that I started, I had to get past the class. Okay? And that's how it is in the church. Uh, a lot of things we don't understand, and the reason we don't understand is because we ain't never did it before. Let me explain it to you this way. If you ain't never lived weights before, you want to be a bodybuilder, you want to be one of them men or them women that got muscles ripping all out their eyelids and all that type of stuff. When you first go to the gym, you're going to get tired and you're going to get so real quick until you get used to doing the exercise. Now, when you get used to doing the exercise, you're going to see the results. It's going to become second nature to you, you know. 
some assembled the jumping jacks or push up. Drop down there and try to do 25 push up and you ain't never did it before. See what happened. But as you practice it, you get better. And that's what we have to do uh, when we deal with spiritual matters in the church. We got to activate them, we got to practice them. So Peter is opening his mouth to speak and to teach on the apostolic authority. That's why they talk. Okay? Because the apostle had to fulfill the requirements of the church until somebody could be brought up, somebody was trained up and, and, and brought to the position where they could function. Okay? Alright, so this this is this is where his teaching and his training came into place. And see, that's why we say that no one or two people should do everything in the church. Okay? So we're, that's why God gave gifts unto men, which include women too, so that we can function in the church. Okay? And that makes things go smooth. Verse number 36 makes this statement. But in every nation, the person who fears God and does what is right by seeing him is acceptable and welcomed by him. Fearing God don't mean that you fear him because God is trying to hurt you. That ain't what that means. That means you got a reverence for who God is. Mm -hmm. You respect who God is. Just like you respect your parents or your father. For example, if you were listening to a song, I remember back in the day, certain songs had certain verses that had one or two cuss words in it. I was going through the house singing the lyrics to the song. When I got to that verse, and I got to that word, and my mother was in the next room, I, had, I couldn't say that word in front of her presence because I feared her, I had respect for her. That's how we got to do with God. See, folks just can't come to church, do anything they want to do in and around the church. They can't come to church and disrespect the past, the people that they have in position. Can't do that. That's not an attack on them. That's an attack on God. And when, what I learned is that these people don't have to say nothing to you. Because when you do it to God, then God will going to deal with you. So you gotta, so you got to have a, 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 a respect and a fear of God. Now, how do you get that? What book do you read to get? Well, in the middle of the service, toward the end, we normally open the doors of the church. This is the formal time of the service where we invite people that are not members to join. First of all, we want them to make a confession of, of faith, okay? And we give them an opportunity to either be baptized and rededicate their life or join this church. And even if they don't join this church, we want them to make that confession. After you make the confession, one of the things that we pray and believe God for is the gift or the Holy Spirit. Now there's water baptism, okay, and then there's baptism uh, by the Holy Spirit. Now, before you try to put your knowledge on me, there's something, and since this is a Baptist church, I say it this way, there's something in the church called the Articles of Faith. Before you start to talk about you being a member or the Baptist faith, but you really don't know what Baptists believe, I want to encourage you to read the Articles of Faith. When you read the Articles of Faith, it talks about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Now, when you get baptized by the Holy Spirit, there are some gifts that you got to possess. So I ask you to find this little, this link. And it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, since this is Christmas time, everybody's looking forward to getting the gift, right? Mm -hmm. God wants to give you something that enables you to get through this life. There are seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, watch what God gives you. The first gift 
And then I'm going to read them out in no particular order. It's wisdom. Okay? The next is understanding. Another one is counsel. Another one is fortitude. Knowledge. Okay? Piety. And the fear of God. These are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In other words, this is a sign that God's Holy Spirit is within you. Now, if you look at it, sometimes they may change the words around a little bit, but they mean the same thing. Okay? Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Okay? Uh, the fear of the Lord. Okay? So that so so these are the gifts for the two. Knowledge, okay, and piety. Some time ago, God dealt with me, and he gave me these things. He said, you need to have knowledge, okay? You need to have an understanding. You need to have wisdom, and you need to be a one. Gave me those four things. It's good to have knowledge because the word says, study to show no self approved okay? Now, when you study it, the first four letters means no, K-N-O-W, okay? So somebody asks you, how do you know you say the word of God is simple? It says, so if you confess with your mouth and leave in your heart that Jesus Christ, you know, God's only begotten Son came, led, died, and resurrected, one day will return, God shall be what? Say That's knowledge. You get that from studying, okay? Next thing you need to have is understanding. You need to understand that if God said it, it's the truth. Because he's a God that cannot lie. Okay? And once you understand that, what understanding does is it gets up under your knowledge and helps lift it up. See, that's why you don't have to worry about when people tell you you don't know what you're talking about. You don't have to argue with them. Matter of fact, Proverbs says it like this, never argue with a fool. Right? Because, see, if you argue with them, that means you question your knowledge. Okay? Next thing, we got the knowledge. We got to understand. Now we got to get some wisdom. That's the practical application of knowledge. That's how we operate spiritually. That's why when you ask old preachers and old, older people something, they give you these crazy things. They say this stuff that's off the wall. You know what I'm saying? You ask them about borrowing money and, and you broke, they tell you that's bought sense. You know, which means you learn from experience what to do and what not to do. You know what I'm saying? You know that just because you got a credit card with a limit on it, that you can go out and match that credit card out, knowing that you don't have the money to pay it back all at once. And then you find out that by struggling to get it paid off, you know, that's about sense. That, that's, that's where your wisdom come in at. The anointing. Wherever God has you at, it is my prayer and my hope that you pray and talk to God and you have followed the direction, okay, that he would have you be. If you do that, things will go well with you and no weapon formed against you will prosper. And, and what you got to understand is that, and I use myself for example, I wanted to stay in Atlanta, Georgia. You understand what I'm saying? But I had lost my job there, and I wasn't getting job opportunities because of whatever reason around 9 and 11. But you can't stay in Atlanta without a job. Can you? People, people like, ain't like in Montgomery, Alabama. You ain't got no job in Atlanta. You finna go down real fast. You know? So, we have to learn to be where God wants us to be because he will get the blessing to us, right? He'll place us in a place where we can be blessed, you know? So once you get there, then the doors open. And everything that God does for us and will do for us, okay, he opens the door. Now, now guess what? Here's the good news. Every blessing that you're going to get in life is already set. It's already released. You just got to get to the place where you need to be in. The door is already open there for you. I don't care how many people in line. 
I don't care what they say and what they got to deal with. If it's for you, God is obligated to make sure that you get it. Now let's look at what Peter said. Peter said, for well, in every nation, the person who fears God and does what he said, that means the people that have made the confession of faith, the people that respect God because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, they fear and reverence God, God accepts. And he calls you blessed. Okay? Then he goes on to verse number 36, says, you know the message which he sent to the son of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Okay? When we tell the Christmas story, when the angel makes the decree about the birth of Christ, the angel says, I bring you good tidings of great joy. Isn't that what it said? Mm -hmm. Which shall be to all people. Right? When they announce the birth, for unto you is born. Okay? And we need to know that Jesus came, bled, and died for all people. He not practicing discrimination, not practicing segregation. If you do what Peter did and open your mouth and make a confession of faith, he comes in from that moment because he knows that if he don't come in and take up residence within you, then the enemy is going to try to snatch your soul back. So God is not hesitant about you. That's why he said, if you abide in me, and I abide in you. He said, I stand at the door and knock. When you answer the door, he coming in. Okay? So that's what we got to understand. Now, Peter did something in verse 34 that we need to get. He did what? He opened his mouth. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Bishop Paul Morton has a song called Be Blessed. I love the song. He opened it up. The first verse of the song said the power of life and death is in the tongue. What does that mean to you? That means what you say concerning your life or somebody else's life has the power to come into fruition. Okay? So you got to be careful the words that you attach to people. If you tell little Johnny, little Johnny, you ain't going to be nothing when you grow up. Little Johnny, believe that. That's a seed. And as long as that seed has the life and it ain't rebuked, then little Johnny going to grow up believing that he ain't going to be nothing. But if you tell little John and little John, you can do all things through Christ which strengthens you. You can be a governor. You can be a president. And when little John get on the job or when little John go to school and everybody else quitting, little John will remember the words. My mama sing. My daddy sing. And sometimes the only reason little John don't quit it's because little Johnny don't want to disappoint mama or dad. But in reality, little Johnny really don't want to disappoint God. Because God has spoke some things to your life that's got to come to pass. And that's why it's important that we follow this step. That's why it's important that we open our mouth. That's why saying praises to God is so important. That's why saying hallelujah. To God is so important. That's why we want to pray out loud, openly. It's so important. When we come to church, you know, uh, prayer ain't no complicated thing. We ain't got to wait till our altar call. You can pray right there in your pew. You can face the wall. You can go in the corner. All these rooms we got here, anybody can break out and pray at any time. We ain't got to stop the service and hand you a microphone just so you can pray. You've been given an invitation by God to do it. If you see something going on, start praying about it. Prayer works. Now let's move on. Look at, look at, look at verse 36. It said, you know the message 
which he said to the sons of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know the things that have taken place throughout Judea, starting in Galilee after the baptism preached by John. So he's giving them a recount. Calling back to their remembrance. That's what the Holy Spirit do. He called back to remembrance the things that have happened. Not only that, it gives you a glimpse of the future. Okay? When I went to school, day one, I wasn't focused on the, the class. I was focused on graduation. <laughs> My mind was set on graduation. Every time I walked by the administration building, I would tell myself, in that safe back there, they got some degrees that got my name on hmm? And what you need to tell yourself as a believer that even though you still on this side, on the other side of the river called Jordan, there's a place called Zion. There's a place called heaven to where the thief at the cross, Jesus said, well, me, him, in paradise, there's a place that's reserved just for you. And I can't get there and call your name and go in your spot. I got to use my name and go in my spot. You ain't got to worry about being evicted there because once you there, you there for eternity. And God got some things that he got waiting on you in hell. And he got some things that he got waiting on you down here. And they just for you and for you alone. Now watch this now. Watch this. It talked about the water baptism in verse 37. In verse 38 it said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit with great power and he went around doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil because God is with him. If God is with you, that's what you can do too. All you got to do is activate, use his name, work under the power, the authority, and the anointing that he gave you. I like to talk to preachers when they first get their call. When they, when they first announce that they've been called into the ministry, I like to talk to them because it's always interesting to me what God tells them. I ain't trying to be nosy, I ain't trying to discredit anyone because God speaks to us based on our belief. He deals with us and he gets us to the level that he will want us and have us to be. Right? So I'm interested to know how, how and, and every pastor has a, every minister, let me say it that way, has a unique experience to where they know that God called them beyond the shadow of a doubt. Now I share this with you, my classmate of mine, we served in the military together. He's a pastor now. So I called him up. First time I called him, he told me that he was in the ministry. He told me this right here. He said, uh, I went to my pastor to tell him that God had called me to preach. And uh, I knew I had to go to him, you know, just out of respect, you know, so that I, you know, let him know. So he went in there and asked to speak to the papa. I said, come on in. So he told him, Pastor, need to talk to you. I said, have a seat. And he sat down, so he started talking. He said, what's on your mind, though? He said, I thank God for calling me to preach. He told me, to get up, get out of my office. You know? He said, he was confused. He came back. Sometime later, he said, no, nah, the brother pastor didn't talk to me. Okay, what's on your mind? He said, God has called me to preach. Said, That's why I want to hear. So you can't think you got to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God will call me. When God gives you something to do, it can't be no doubt in your mind that he did it. Otherwise, you'll be ineffective. See, Peter had to be sure that it was God that was calling him, that's what gives you the right to use God's authority and power. You gotta know who you are. 
Now, do you think you can go to the Universal Alabama and tell Nick Saban that he's not the head coach? <laughs> can, do you think you can do that? Huh? I'm talking about just walk off the street and say, you're not the coach. I, I know you're walking up and down the sideline and you need folks to follow what you're doing, but I'm going to start telling the people to tie what to do. How do you think that's going to work out? <laughs> right? Now, with that said, in this verse, 39 says, we are eyewitnesses of everything that he did both in the land of the Jews and Jerusalem. They also put him to death by hanging him on the cross. God raised him to life on the third day and caused him to be plainly seen, not to all people, but to the witnesses who were chosen, designated beforehand by God, that is to us who are and drank together with him after he rose from the dead. Now, he's taking us through the transition of, transition of Jesus' crucifixion. And they said he was seen. Now let me show you how the Holy Spirit. Let me confirm for you that it's really within you. If you under the sound of my voice, I'm gonna prove it to you. Get ready. Watch this. Movie. Have you ever been someplace and you know in your mind you ain't never been there before a day in your life, but you feel so comfortable there and you trying to tell yourself it seems like I've been here before. You ever experienced that? Have you ever seen somebody and you don't know them and they agree they don't know you but you all look so familiar to each other and you saying to yourself look like I know you from some place well let me tell you what it is your spirits are agreeing with each other your spirits are coming into relationship with the fact that they are blood, born again, blood bought believer, and so are you. And you look familiar. You look at each other so familiar because you're not looking through natural eyes. You're looking through the eyes of Jesus. Now, how do you know that? Well, it says so in the scripture. If you abide in me, that means you inside Jesus. And then Jesus say, and I abide in you, that means he inside you. Right? So if he's inside you, you looking through his eyes. So when he see you see, that's why things look familiar to you. Even though you haven't physically been there, in the spiritual sense, he's giving you this inspiration. He's giving you this knowledge. He's giving you this understanding. And so your your, 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 your mortal mind, your, your carnal mind is saying, nah, I know I ain't seen this person. I ain't been here before. But what I'm trying to tell you is God can show you some things. God can let you experience some things that go beyond carnality. It go beyond what makes sense. You say, well, teach I ain't following. Let's check in with Peter again. Peter saw Jesus walking on water. And he posed a question to him, Lord, if that's you. Say, I don't want to be tricked. I know there's some trickery going on out here. We've been out on the water. Mirages and things are common out there. You, you're tired, you're fatigued. Maybe my mind, my eyes playing tricks on But if it's really you, Lord, bid me to come. Watch how Jesus answered. Watch the wheels of me. He didn't say, Peter, come. He said, whosoever will, let it come. Anybody that was on the boat could have got out. But Peter was the only one. See, that's how you get your position in God. And as long as he focused on Jesus, he saw things the way Jesus saw them. When he walked on water, he wasn't concerned about the laws of gravity. He wasn't concerned about physical property. You know, because it don't make sense that a human being can walk on water. That, 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 that don't line up. But the scriptures say, I can do all things through Christ. That means Christ has to dwell in you in order for you to be able to operate like that. 
So that's what Peter was doing. That's how he was operating. That's how we work and function in the church. Okay? We got to do it through Christ. There are some people that got some good ideas. Okay? They got some good suggestions. It just got to be through Christ. If it ain't through God, if it ain't through Christ, we can't do it. Either. You have to understand it. So Peter is telling the story. He says, so whatever God has done, allowed you to witness to, okay? And then he said, verse 20, 42, he said, he commanded us to preach to the people, Jew and Gentile. Solomon testified that he is the one that has been appointed and ordained by God as judge of the living and of the dead. In other words, we got to tell people about this. We got to preach the good news to them. Now, Preach really means to forcibly tell somebody. That's what preaching really is. And the word of God throws this on you. It says, it pleases God that through the foolishness of preaching, men's souls might be saved. And you got to ask yourself, why do God call preaching foolish? And why would he use it to save soul? Well, it's foolish because God wants to inspire everybody, but some people won't hear. And we come to church, and every Sunday there are people that will say to you that if the pastor don't jump out of the pulpit, if he don't spin around, if he don't raise his voice up, you know, if he don't go through all these theatrics that he, had, he or she had not preached, they'll miss the whole sermon. You know, but let him come out here and get a split, do a hand step. Oh, he showed preach today. What he preached about, I don't know, but he moved on. <laughs> you know, so 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 you got to understand how God said, God going to inspire you. He wants you to really understand what's going on and how to activate the word in your life. Okay? And so that now, uh, while Peter was still speaking these words, Look at that right there on 44. The Holy Spirit fell on all those who were listening to the message, confirming God's acceptance of the Gentiles. All the circumcised believers, all who came with Peter, were amazed because the gifts of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. But they that heard them telling, talking in an unknown tongue, Languages and exalting and magnifying the praise of God. Then people said, Can anyone refuse water for these people to be baptized since they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? Now, watch what happened. Three things happened here. And you got to get there. First, Peter was a believer. And in order to move for God, you got to be a believer. Second, Peter released the word. Now, any time you release the word in God's name, in Jesus' name, you got to go through the process. You got you to gotta lift up the name of Jesus. Okay? When the Holy Spirit get poured out, miracle signs and wonders are going to come. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And it comes the way it going to come and how it's going to come. Now, how's the going to come? And he go teach and reiterate, but the choice is yours. If you choose to believe, you can receive just as they did. You can get these gifts based on your belief. Now let me say this. Just because you didn't experience the burning bush, you can't tell Moses it don't take all that bold. We got two, we got two minutes. Okay. Uh, and 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 deny that. You know, you gotta be open to receive, you gotta be open uh for God to bless and for God to keep. So with that said, uh we'll close here. Uh, uh and we'll be prepared to move on to the next level of the search. May God bless you. And may God keep it.